Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. So, still on the wide receiver topic. I saw someone say something and I said, you know what? Let me prove, let me, let me, let me do some research and see if this particular narrative is true. Right? And that narrative is, man. Ohio State, Alabama, they getting all the top South Florida wide receivers. We getting the leftovers. They they doing this, they doing that. And I always stop and I think, I said, man, you know, sometimes people regurgitate stuff and they repeat stuff so much that in people's minds it becomes true without doing any research. So I stopped and I said, well, let me see all these, all this talent that has left South Florida and has left to go to these other schools and gone to the NFL and left Miami by the wayside with the, the leftovers. So I went back to 2013. I'm using 247 as a reference point. I could have gone back further, but I think 10 years is a good sample size enough to prove a particular point, at least in my opinion. But if someone wants to go back further, hey, that's up to you, man. You know, you can go back further. You can go back as far as you want to. You can go back to 2000. I don't care. I'm going from 13 to 23. But the reality, I'm really only going from 13 to 21 for because the 23 class hasn't taken a snap. And the 22 class of receivers, those guys were, were freshmen. And a lot of those guys don't necessarily play. But so this is this is what I, this is how I'm doing it. I'm only doing guys that are four stars or better from South Florida. From South Florida. Not the entire state of Florida, but just from South Florida, right? Because that's that's the whole big thing. All this talent leaving the state of Miami. So let's talk about it. So 2013, there was only one, according to 247, unless I overlook something, but according to 247, there was only one wide receiver from South Florida that was rated four stars or better. That was Stacey Coley. We got Stacey Coley. He was the number four ranked overall wide receiver. Again, I don't know how they came up with these particular rankings at the end of the year because some of these numbers and rankings, I don't, I don't necessarily really remember them like that, but I'm just giving you this. So, um, and from a standpoint, Stacey Coley was, was solid. Um, most would probably say he didn't play up to the potential that we all had set out for him, especially after the way he burst on the scene as a true freshman, right? So there's that. 2014, these are the top South Florida wide receivers. And what I'm doing is I'm doing the top South Florida wide receivers versus the guys that we got to see, right? Did we get a better end of the stick or did we just get completely shafted? So Stacey Cole was the top four, was the top South Florida wide receiver, and Stacey Cole was also the top um top South Florida wide receiver, and he was the only South Florida receiver rated four stars or higher, according to 247, right? 2014. Travis Rudolph, Ermon Lane, Johnny Dixon, Isaiah McKenzie, and CJ Wharton. So, looking at these particular names, the first name that pops off the list, obviously, is Travis Rudolph. I still remember that particular recruitment. It came down to Al Golden and staff wanting Travis Rudolph to be a corner, and Travis Rudolph wanted to play wide receiver. So, Travis Rudolph just went to Florida State and picked up where Rashad Green left off at, had a good, good uh, career at Florida State. And I think that, yeah, we probably missed, right? We missed. He was the number two wide receiver, according to 247. Number Next one, Amon Lane, who was number four. I will say this. There were some guys who did feel like Amon Lane was not worthy of the ranking that he got, right? So I will say that. But still at the same time, at that time, he was considered to be a miss. Uh, same thing goes for Johnny Dixon. I think Johnny Dixon Mill went to Ohio State, had some injuries. So I don't really think... That's too much of a miss when you factor in the injuries and things of that particular nature. Isaiah McKenzie, a guy who ended up going to the University of Georgia. Some people may look at that. Maybe that was a miss, but I don't necessarily remember too much about Isaiah McKenzie and C.J. Warden. Um, I don't think that was a miss. Who did we get in return? We got Braxton Berrios. Um, going back to my last video, I'm not going to relegate Braxton's career to one particular year. Um, I think from a collegiate standpoint, I think Travis Rudolph probably had a better career collegiately than Braxton Berrios. And I think Braxton Berrios, from a collegiate standpoint, will fall right in there with Johnny Dixon and Isaiah McKenzie. But if we look at the grand scheme of things, Braxton Berrios is probably the most successful UN wide receiver uh, since Travis Benjamin. 
excluding KJ Osborne because I'm I'm just talking about guys that committed, which I said that on my previous video. So I think we so I think that's uh, I think that's that's an even swap, to be honest, in my opinion. 2015, we got Deion Kane, Calvin Ridley, Devontae Phillips, Javon Durant, and Antonio Callaway. We got Lawrence Cager that particular year. Now, two names obviously stick out to me. Calvin Ridley went to the University of Alabama, went on to go to the NFL, um, did some great things at the University of Alabama, did some great things, doing some great things in the NFL. Antonio Callaway, absolute menace at the University of Florida. I know he got into some trouble, um, derailed, you know, things, but from a collegiate standpoint, uh, we flat out missed those two guys. Deion Kane was a lot, was kind of hit and miss. Um, at the University of Clemson. I think he did sustain some injuries and stuff like that. But again, I mean, when you look at it, it's like, I mean, you, you, it's not a miss. It's not as big of a miss as it was at the time that he committed. Um, Devontae Phillips, I still remember that situation, got into some trouble you know, in Central. I know some people were saying that the trouble that he was in, it, it, it didn't, it, it wasn't good for him to stay in, the, uh, stay in Miami. And I think he subsequently ended up getting arrested at Florida State. Uh, Durant, I think he ended up going to West Virginia, and then I think he finished his career at FAU. So those those three guys aren't misses. Um, I think when you look at it, Lawrence Cager probably performed just as well as uh, Deion Kane and Javon Durant, in my opinion. So that's two out of five, and I would say that those two guys could have done some great things here at the University of Miami. So, so we're up to three guys, right? In these three years, right? So there's one guy per year. So 2016, top South Florida wide receivers. Well, the, the receivers that we get that were top receivers in South Florida, Benjamin Victor, uh, Joshua Hammond, and Brandon Johnson. Who did we get that year? We got Amon Richards and RIP to Sam Bruce. Sam Bruce didn't, didn't take a snap here at the University of Miami, and I'm not even going to be, begin to try to uh, predict what Sam Bruce could have brought to the University of Miami. So, um, again, rest in peace to Sam Bruce. Condolences to his family. Um, but that was a big get. Obviously, when you look at Amon Richards and, you know, in comparison to Benjamin Victor, uh, Joshua Hammond, and Brandon Johnson, I think we won that that, that trade off by a landslide. Like, I don't even think it's, I don't think it's debatable. Um, obviously, but even though Amon um, suffered that horrific injury that ended his career, um, but I still think that we got the we got the better end out of that deal. <clears throat> 2017, we got uh, it was Jerry Judy and Trevon and uh, Trevion Grimes or Trayvon Grimes. Who do we get? Jeff Thomas, Mike Harley, Evidence, and Joku. Now, obviously, of course, when you look at this, Jerry Judy just stands out. Jerry Judy's Jerry Judy was him at Alabama. Uh, he was him in high school, and he's doing some good things in the NFL. So I don't think you can compare Jeff Thomas and Mike Harley and Evidence and Joku to what Jerry Judy left or what Jerry Judy did. So there's four guys that we've missed um, flat out. I think when you look at the careers in totality, I think Mike Harley and Trevor and Grimes are kind of similar um, in that aspect. And then obviously Jeff Thomas and, and, Evidence, and Evidence and Joku, uh, they just didn't work out. Uh, simple as that. We we'll get to the 2018 class. We got Kevin Austin, Tyquan Thornton, and Xavier Williams, and we got Mark Pope and Brian Hightower. Um, I don't know if Tyquan Thornton. I know he went to. Uh, I think he went to Baylor. I don't. He may have had a pretty good year, but I don't think it was something that was just. Oh man, we just flat out missed the guy. I don't know about Kevin Austin, and Xavier Williams. So it doesn't like that year was very strong, even though it was high expectations for Mark Pope as well as Brian Hightower at one point in time, but it just didn't work out. 2019, we got Frank Ladson and John Dun uh, Dunmore, and we got Je we got Jeremiah Payton. Um, didn't work. Just didn't work. We got Frank Ladson in the end, though. We got him now. <laughs> if, if that means anything, we got Frank Ladson now. Uh, but, you know, uh, Frank just – Frank – it just it hasn't worked out to this particular point, so I don't I don't consider it to be a miss. Um, twenty twenty Xavier Henderson, C.J. Henderson's younger brother, Marcus Rosemary, uh, Jones Bell. I can't pronounce his first name. Marcus Fleming, uh, Javion Hester, and Brian Robinson, and we got Keyshawn Smith and Michael Redding. Now, <clears throat> I think 
It's asterisks beside Xavier Henderson and Marcus Rosemary. Uh, for the simple fact, I think Marcus Rosemary could be um, Georgia's number one wide receiver this particular year. I know he's dealt with some injuries. Uh, I don't think I don't know I don't think he's George Pickens, but you know, and Xavier Henderson I think was the number one receiver for the University of Florida. And again, like I say, Keyshawn Smith and Michael Redding. Um, but if we're talking about guys that are just game breakers and difference makers, I don't see that in any of these particular guys right here. So um, while we miss some guys, I just don't. I just don't think it's that big of a miss. And 2021, uh, Troy Stilato, and we were able to get Romello Brinson and Brashad. Obviously, Romello Brinson left, and we got Brashad. And I think that Brashad and Romello Brinson, or probably mostly Brashad, has performed on the same level or maybe a little bit better than uh, Troy Stilato. So when we add this up, it's 27 total guys that were just South Florida-based that we didn't get. And out of that 27, four guys. We missed on four difference makers out of 27. Well, no, 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 no. Four guys out of 27 were difference makers. So I asked the question, where's all this talent that y'all say we missed out on? Where is it? Now, I'll be the first person again because I'm objective. I'll be the first to say, that, look, just because a guy didn't perform there, just because a guy had injuries there, that doesn't mean that the guy would have had injuries here or vice versa. But we can't play the hypothetical game. We just got to deal with the, the, the information that's in our face. And the information in our face is that since 2013, the University of Miami has only missed out on four difference makers. Now, hypothetical game. Well, shy. well, you know, had we got at least two of those difference makers, that could have opened up a pipeline because, look, all it took was Julio doing it in Alabama that opened up the door. Okay, fine. I'll give you that. But in the grand scheme of things, you guys have made it seem like 27 guys were difference makers with four guys who weren't. When it's really four guys who were difference makers and, 27, and, and uh, 24 guys who weren't, well, 23 guys who weren't. So four out of 27, either there's just been some misevaluations of these South Florida wide receivers. They've gone to bad situations, but I don't see this huge miss or these huge misses that people have tried to make it out to seem to be. But again, this is what I like doing. I like going back to see if these narratives have, if these, if these narratives make sense. And four out of 27, you need to stop that narrative right now. I might do the running backs next. I just might. I ain't seen nobody talk about the running backs, though. We kind of done pretty good at running back. I ain't seen nobody talk about running backs. Obviously, of course, the Sonny Michelle and, and Dallin. You know what? I just might. I'm going to do running back sticks. But anyway, man, y'all like, share, subscribe, comment to the video, and always, it's all about the you.